Getting started with Makefile Tools in Visual Studio Code, we will cover the installation, configuration, and general usage, including building, launching, and debugging. So let's start Visual Studio Code and install the Makefile Tools extension. Now we open our Makefile project. Here, the Makefile extension wants to do a dry run of the Makefile. We will say yes to this. The dry run allows IntelliSense to understand the project. And there is some text about the dry run, but we will come back to that later. This is our Makefile. It contains a set of fairly standard targets, all debug, release, and doc. Let's have a look at main. It's the entry point to a program that calculates the factorial of a number. OK, on to the extension setup. First up is the configuration. What is that, you ask? Well, if all you do when building your project is to just type make, then you would use the default configuration. But sometimes it's necessary to pass arguments to make and configure the project in different ways. These settings are stored in a configuration. Here I'm selecting default, but that did not work. It's a known bug. To get around that, I firstly select a build and launch a target. This creates a .vscode settings.json file. In this file, we add makefile.configurations and add a default configuration called default config. If we go back to the configuration, we can now select default config. Looking at main again, you will notice here there's this hash if def debug on. We can enable that in a new configuration. We'll call it debug logging. To add make arguments, we use make args and extend C flags with debug on. I'll also add the default problem matches. These pass the output of the compiler. Selecting debug logging as the configuration and going back to main, we should see that the debug on code is now active. Next up, the build target. We quickly set this earlier without much attention, but you'll notice there's one issue here. The object file is shown as a target. Now, I don't like that. I'm going to go to the extension settings, which are user wide rather than project specific. And in the settings, I'll add phony only targets and set that to true. Now, if I do a clean and select the build target again, OK, it's looking better, but it's missing something. In the make file, you can see that we have a doc target. It's not listed, and this is a known bug. To get around this, you can add a fake dependency. Now, on Linux, you can add a dot as a dependency. On Windows, you might want to add some other static file. And so now we have the doc target. Fantastic. Let's launch the program. And that's compiling. You can see the debug on is defined. But that failed to run properly. My factorial program needs some parameters. When we launched, this configuration was created for us. Let's simplify this using the dollar workspace folder macro, which is defined in the GitHub documentation. And I'll also add some extra debug launch configurations. 
If you are curious, we are asking the program to calculate different factorials and to either calculate the factorial using a loop or to calculate it recursively. Now, notice what happens when I launch a default configuration for the first time. It adds a default entry in this settings file. Again, I am going to simplify it and add some extra release launch configurations. When I run this debug launch configuration, it correctly calculates the factorial of 3 to be equal to 6. Do you remember me pointing out this text referring to the make dry run? Well, let me just paraphrase it and list the main points. The makefile tools extension process will do a make dry run to pass the output. This is needed for IntelliSense and for target information. The dry runs only list make operations, but some code may be executed, and that's the issue. To avoid this dry run configuration process, you can alternatively use a full, clean, verbose build log. The log should be pointed to via the settings makefile.buildlog. The dry run command is make dry run always make keep going print directory. So when you want to avoid dry run side effects, you should set the dry run log. More often than not, you will not need it. And likewise for the makefile here, it isn't needed. But for argument's sake, Let's say our makefile has unwanted side effects. Now, you can create the log from the command line, but I prefer to use the dry run log file as generated by the extension, as that's less error prone. Well, for me, it is. To get access to it, I add the following makefile.extension output folder and set that to dev forward slash out. So if I change the configuration and do a build, we find in the dev out folder a dry run log file. As you can see, it's just the output from a dry run. And I'm going to move that file into a new build directory called log. There we go, it's now moved. If we go back to the extension, we can set the path to the new dry run log file. Is it working, you ask? Well, if I clear the output, change the configuration, we can see in the output that it's using the dry run log file. So that's all the basic configuration that we might want to do. Let's very quickly run a bunch of launch configurations. But notice I still have this main code message. That's because I didn't recompile after changing the configuration. So let's recompile. And now you can see that the debug on is not being defined anymore. If I run it again, that message is gone. One last thing, debugging. Let's click on the debug icon. Oops, forgot to add a breakpoint. I'll quickly add one before it starts the debug session just in time. So no surprises here. We can, as usual, just step over or step into our code with a debugger. And that wraps up the getting started with Makefile Tools.